What's up everybody? Welcome to the garage. My name's Blake. I'm about to show you my latest project. Hold up. Wait a minute. Let's go back to the beginning. Let me tell you how I even got this truck. So I've been looking for one for years in this color that wasn't too banged up and not too rusty. Found a good deal on one in Kansas, so I went up there and drug it back home. This is a 1968 Chevrolet C20. It's an eight lug, three quarter ton. So that means it has heavier duty suspension and rear ends than a C10. Uh, this one has a little basic 350 swapped in, Edelbrock carb, turbo 400 transmission, uh, but it's a real basic model. It has no power steering, no power brakes. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. When I got it, the uh, shifter was broken off in the column. Here's the original one. It's supposed to be one piece there. Obviously this rocker, rusty on the outside. Have to replace that cab corners. It also has some uh, cherry bombs or glass packs, whatever you want to call them. Long tube headers. Sounds all right. Kind of sounds like a boat. The rear end is an Eaton HO52. It's an eight lug, full floater, big badass rear end. You can see though, it's leaking out of every seal. The brakes are leaky. Um, and this one is an open diff, and I really wanted a posi, so I'm probably going to switch the whole thing out. So, enough talking, let's go take it for a test drive. So first test drive, not terrible, not great. It's pretty much what I expected. This truck was literally a farm truck in Kansas its whole life. So, I mean, it drives as well as it needs to to not crash into the barn, you know, and carry some hay bales around. The brakes, they leak out all the fluid. Eventually, you gotta keep topping it up. The suspension, it's all worn out. Uh, but the motor runs pretty good. It needs some adjusting on the timing. Um, but you know, it's a good starting point. Alright, so a lot of these reproduction fuel sending units for the original C10 tanks, they come with these floats and they're brass. But you can see the gas leaking out of this one. And I set this outside like two days ago, so it's still leaking gas out. It was full, still got a bunch in it. They're just not sealed good, I guess. So. The alternative is to get a little plastic one. And you can get this one, this part number. It's for Jeep CJs. I got this from Four Wheel Parts because there's one right up the street and it's like three bucks or something, three or four dollars. Anyways, it fits right on, uh, clips right into this thing in place of the brass one and then you're good to go. So if you're ever having fuel, gauge problems and your wiring is all good in your C10, check your float. So I had a plan and I started to acquire parts. I got this whole front clip from a square body Chevy so that gave me all the components to put disc brakes on the front. Had to chop out the old springs to take it apart. I also found this 12 bolt from a 1970 C10 and started cleaning that thing up and refreshing it. whole old rear end suspension out cleaned and painted the back half of the frame it used to look all like that scaly gnarly now look
looks much better. So tearing apart the front end. You know something's old and gross when the it's so greasy that it's furry. You nasty. 50 plus years of dirt. There's probably some good vitamins and minerals in there. These are the upper control arms. All 67 through 72 Chevys are like this. They have like a metal bushing set up where this outer cap threads into the control arm as well as the little crossbar. So to get them out, you just have to hold one in still and hammer on the other side with a big wrench. Just use some heat and obviously some good old PB. And these things will break loose. Then eventually you can spin them by hand. And as long as they start coming out of the control arm, the shaft doesn't matter if it's front ends back together. It all went really smooth. Uh, new bearing seals, bushings, everything is new pretty much. Uh, got a little creative on the caliper paint. This brake hose, this part number, Duralast, I think that's AutoZone where I got it from. You guys probably know that the 71s, 72s, once they started putting disc brakes on these from the factory, they moved the hard lines up to the front. So if you buy rubber hoses for a 71 and you try to put them on your 68, like in my case, using the factory hard lines, it will be too long. So the wheels are 15 by 10s, tires. 33, 12, 50, 15. And I think the size is perfect. I uh, got my Bilsteins mounted. I did a custom mount back here with a upper mount for front shocks. And I just swapped the sides of these lower brackets. That way the shock is on the outside of the frame. Factory, they're like inside and they're pointing inwards and upwards it's kind of a weird angle uh, so I think this will handle a lot better while I'm making this thing better to drive figured I might as well address this radiator previous owner put it in it's a little bit too tall so the normal uh, brackets that mounted to the core support don't work so it got wired in obviously um, so I went ahead and bought an aluminum one it was affordable should fit good I'm draining the old one now Sometimes you just gotta appreciate all the work you put into something and take a nice long look at it and just say, Oh dang! 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 That's cool. This thing is cool to me. I don't know what your opinion is on it. Maybe if you made it this far in the video, you think it's cool too. But uh, this is a truck I plan on keeping forever, so I just wanted to do it the right way. This is pretty much phase one of my plan. I got a big phase two in mind, but uh, I had to do this stuff first. 
you can't throw 500 horsepower into something that you don't trust to stop, you know, or handle, or blow out a 53-year-old ball joint on the highway. You don't want that to happen. This thing is at a good point right now. It's a great cruiser. Suspension's real comfortable. The brakes work great and they're reliable. And that's the main thing. It's a lot better off than it was when I started. So now it's ready for the next step, but I just gotta make sure my wallet is ready too. Well, say it, don't spray it, brother. Dang. I'll tell you what you do, you just take them dang old spark plugs out and then that little hole, you just put a little hole around there, just like Bobby Hunter said, it's just like it go boom, boom, just like that. Well, I wish it were that simple, Boomhauer. <laughs>